Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gary with Dylan Fan TV, man. Back at you on this video, at the content in this video. Go ahead and smash that like button at the content of this channel. Go ahead and subscribe, man. Look. All right. So, um, back in Baltimore, was able to watch the game when it happened, but wasn't able to talk about it because flights and all kinds of crazy stuff. Did get back to Baltimore until about, I don't know, um, 2 in the morning. So, yeah. But we will talk about the game now, positive, negatives, um, you know, just get my thoughts on it, right? So I think I titled this video, the Ravens versus Texans was sloppy. And I think that's probably the best place to start, right? Um, the game was very, very sloppy from the Ravens' perspective. Um, it kept the Texas team that honestly was very, very up and down in the game, right? Now, let's talk about the offense, right? I put a poll out. Uh, I guess a couple weeks ago, right, asking about should Lamar Jackson. Really, it was about Lamar Jackson and the whole first team offense. Right, but I just said Lamar Jackson. But should Lamar Jackson and the whole first team offense play in the preseason at all, or just get that one up versus Texas, right? And you know, it was pretty much a resounding no. Let them play versus Texas, right? Just let 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 that be their first action. And that's what it looked like. It looked like an offense that hadn't gone against real live competition um, in a real live game since, you know, several months ago, right? Um, the offensive line struggled, I thought, in particular, uh, left and right tackle. Uh, Morgan Moses got uh, absolutely whipped by freaking um, Will Anderson on multiple occasions. Will Anderson had a good debut, I thought. Um Strong bull rush, like he looked. He looked like a number two pick in the draft, a number three pick, I guess he, he was. But um, so that looked good, right? Um, but as far as the Ravens' perspective, I will say this, right? Zay Flowers is as advertised. Um, he was the star of the show on offense, right? Whether they were throwing screens to him, whether they were giving him handoffs, whether they were throwing uh quick outs to him and he was making a, a, a two yard catch into a 20 yard game, right? He showed why he should have been way higher than the Ravens drafted him, right? But we're glad that the Ravens were able to get him where they got him, right? So obviously we should be saying that, all right? Um, now for me about the offense being a sloppy part, this is why, now who knows how much of a difference would have made, right? Maybe it just would have made me feel better, right? But the offense should have played at least a half total in the preseason, right? Whether that's one quarter in this game, one quarter in the other game, they should have played some together in the preseason, right? Just because, right? And look, the Ravens have an injury history that, honestly, I get why they didn't play their starters. You go back to 2021, you, you think you're playing it safe, and then um, you think you're doing what's best for the play. So I understand that. But at the same time, this is a brand new offense. Uh, Lamar Jackson is brand new at calling it. Tom Munkin is brand new with these players. This was the year to be like, okay, guys, get out there and let's see what's going on with it, right? Let's let's see how it runs, let's see how it calls, let's see how we are, you know, we line up, how we take our spots, everything. They needed some time to work on that, right? And hop down there first game versus the Texans, and look like that's what they were doing, working it out like it was the preseason game. To me, that first half. Versus Texas on offense was the Ravens preseason, right there. Um, they looked shoveled. They looked um, confused at points. And honestly, Lamar Jackson was running for his life um, for a large majority of really the game, but especially the first half, right? Now, would that all be solved in the preseason? I don't know. But I think that the, the fact that they started off so slow, the fact that they looked so out of place, it could have helped to have live game action, live game reps um, in the last couple of weeks before coming into this game, right? Now, if the Ravens were playing a better team than the Houston Texans, they could have lost this football game, right? Um, CJ Stroud is a young rookie quarterback. I thought he had some really nice drives. I think he had an 11 play and a 15 play drive. They didn't result in touchdowns. It was all in field goals, but he kept them on the field. He kept them driving down the field. And I thought that he was he looked good on those drives in particular, right? Now, 
I think the second drive, the second field goal drive, when it ended the half, was extended by Travis Jones and a very, very boneheaded um, rough in the passer call that he that he could have easily avoided, right? Um, so look, this game was a learning out, filling out process, right? So um, for the offense, right? Let's talk about. Let's talk about positives, right? So we talked about the negatives, how they looked, um, out of sync, whatever, right? The positive is they still found ways to score, right? The positives are that in the red zone, they looked like they had more um, more options in the red zone. They actually ran the ball pretty effectively in the red zone to score. How many times have we seen a Greg Roman offense get down to the red zone do the thing that we've been quote unquote known for, which is running the football and not getting in the end zone. The Ravens score, I believe, what, three rushing touchdowns? I think JK gets one and uh Justice Hill gets two. So that's a major positive, right? Get down to the red zone and scoring touchdowns. I thought that was a major positive, okay? Um and the offense, the way it looked, I will say this. The biggest thing I noticed was a lot of different formations, a lot of different looks that Tom McKin got out there, right? You had your spread looks, you had uh you had some stack looks, receivers, you know, lined up behind each other. You had some uh so you had some under center power looks. Um you know, Lamar just got a little bit of a bootleg rollout. Um I think that's the one that Charlie Cola ended up dropping. So I will say this. The Ravens put a lot of versatility on the field. And just by alignment, I couldn't tell. And obviously, it's only the first game of this season. So, we'll, we'll see if tells get stronger as the season goes along. But as the first game, I think I couldn't line up and I couldn't say, okay, this is a run, this is a pass, right? The formations that they were in were balanced. And formations where, okay, I can see you doing this and this out of, out of those formations, right? Uh, I will say this. I think the most surprising thing for me is that Patrick Ricard, Played a lot more than I thought he would. Um, hold on one second. Sorry about that. Yeah, that Patrick Ricard played a lot more than I thought he would. Uh, so Tom Michael said he had played Patrick Ricard in the office. He wasn't lying about that. He was, he was, he was telling the truth, right? Um, so uh, I guess I'll say one more thing about the Ravens offense, too, that wasn't that great, which is the fact that um, I love how Zay Flowers played, but I did think that I think how most fans felt that they were kind of forcing touches to him a little bit too much, right? I get that they have a plan for him on his offense, but some of these touches could go to Bateman, to Odell, um, things like that. You know what I mean? A lot of it was like force feeding the ball to Zay Flowers, right? And um, if he was the only weapon, I would get it. But the Ravens have diversified the weapons so that one guy didn't have to be force fed. So if I could say that for Tom Munkin, change it up a little bit, who gets the rock, uh, whether that's... Bateman getting the screen, Odell getting the screen, you know. I think there was a couple of times Odell had slants that, you know, him and Lamar don't got a timer just yet that maybe Lamar could have hit him, right? So, uh, at the end of the day, it was sloppy all around. Quarterback, offensive line, everything was play calling. was a little out of touch. But Lamar admitted himself that he was rusty. So, uh, that shouldn't be too, too surprising, right? Now, defense, right? All right, defense, real quick, because I don't want to hold you guys too long, right? All right, defense. I thought that the pass rush was inconsistent, but I thought that it did have times where it got home really, really well. And I think the standout play on that side of the ball is just because, once again, he plays in the game, he causes a turnover, and that's David Ojabo, right? Um, the idea of getting a sack is one thing, right? The concept of getting a sack is one thing. Bringing the quarterback down for a loss is one thing. Getting the ball out of his hands is another completely entirely different skill. And David Ojabo instinctually has this skill, right? You can see that when he sat um, CJ Stroud, his eyes were on the football, right? He wasn't worried about just getting CJ Stroud to the ground. He was, CJ Stroud didn't see him. He was coming for that ball, right? And that is a skill in itself, right? He doesn't even have to think about that. He's scoring for the football, right? Um, so I love the fact that he stripped Joe Burrow, strip sack. Now he strips CJ Stroud. I love the fact that when he sees the opportunity to get the ball, he doesn't miss it. He's always after the football, right? Now, this is the inconsistent part, right? 
There were a couple times where CJ Stroud could have been sacked where they escaped. The Ravens, historically, doesn't matter who's the DC, who's the outside linebacker coach, have had a problem with getting quarterbacks to the ground, right? You can go back to Ben Roethlisberger in his prime all the way up to now. They've had problems with getting quarterbacks to the ground. I don't know how you fix that. This has happened since, like I said, since I was a teenager. I don't know how you fix that. But that would be a negative, I thought. They had a couple times they see Charles to the ground, they didn't. I would say that the coverage on the back end was pretty solid. I thought Ronald Darby surprised me in run support. I thought he really played really well in the, in the run fits. Um, in pass in, in on pass defense, he was just okay. I thought he beat, got beat a couple times, uh, lost his man a couple times, but it's his first game as a Raven, first game in the system. I'm not going to be overly hard or aggressive on him. It is what it is, right? Um, so I thought that he played okay. Um, I thought Roquan and Patrick Queen were dominant in the middle of the park, right? Whether the Ravens had great run defense, that's that's a part to the uh, the, the defensive line, also parts of the linebackers, right? Um, and I thought that the safeties flew around the field, right? Whether that was Kyle Hamilton being all over the place, uh, Darius Washington coming in, getting a sack. I mean, I know he's technically a nickel, but, you know, he's lining up DB, whatever. Um, getting a sack, whatever, being out there, playing aggressive when he's out there. Um, hopefully, Marcus Williams is okay. Um, you know, so I thought that was great, right? And then the last thing we got to talk about is injuries real quick, right? Um, I don't know if the Ravens injury history, it has anything to do with the strict and conditioning program. Maybe it's bad luck. I don't know now, you know, JK Dobbins goes down. He's out for the year. Marcus Williams goes down. We'll see if it, they're saying it's not, it's not serious. We'll see what happens. Finally, Stanley is saying it's not serious, but he went down again. Um, Tyler and the mom, we don't know. Uh, he walked off the field and they leave his own power, which was great. But uh, multiple star players hurt again. Um, that's a serious question that the Ravens have to answer. And I don't know how they can answer. They tried everything. They revamped offices and conditioning programs. They fired C. Saunders. They've done a whole bunch of different things. But yet, here we go where the main guys get hurt. And maybe it's just football and maybe the Ravens are just unlucky that way. And that's just how the cards fall. But maybe they could do something about it. I don't know. But that's my thoughts, man. Ravens versus Texans. I thought the offense was sloppy. I thought they could have used some time in the preseason. The defense, I thought, played really well. Um, they took advantage of a rookie quarterback. They had a couple of let-ups letting those long drives happen. But for the most part, defense played really, really well. And the injuries, even though they are part of the game, um, it seems to happen to the Ravens a lot. And it's a very, very difficult thing that they're going to have to overcome. Uh, simple as that. All right. So that's my thoughts on the game, man. Give me your thoughts on the game. I gave a couple of uh, guys who I thought stood out, which was Zay Flowers, David Ojabo. Give me some guys that you thought stood out in your opinion, man. But it's Gabriel, just on the fan TV. I'm out.